The kingdom of God is not what we eat or what we drink, but it is peace, joy, righteousness in the Holy Ghost. So when we enter into the kingdom, here is the benefits. Because of a lack of understanding the kingdom, many of us spend miserable days and nights because we have not in, uh, embraced kingdom principles. Mm -hmm. All right? Amen. If what's in the kingdom is righteousness, mm -hmm. peace, mm -hmm. and joy mm -hmm. in the Holy Ghost, yeah. it would not matter, if I understand that principle, yeah. it would not matter what I'm facing or what I'm going through, uh -huh. my peace, yes. my joy, yes. my righteousness yeah. is going to remain Praise as long as I remain in the kingdom. Yeah. Because, well, let me say it to you like this, that is the environment of the kingdom. Praise God. Huh. It's the environment yeah. of the kingdom. It's God's environment. And if we are dwelling in the environment of the kingdom, then we receive what the kingdom has to offer, which means that even though we're faced with challenges and, and maybe going through some tests and trial, amen, we are not despondent. We are not, amen, broken down. We are not at a point where we feel hopeless because if I understand kingdom, and you can read this in Romans 8, 28, all things, all of it, Yes. His work. Work us how? Together. Together for, for good. The good of those who and that love God. And who are the call according, according to his, his purpose. purpose. So what is it doing? It's it's working. working. Now I gotta understand the kingdom to know it's working for me. Uh -huh. I tell people all the time, if you understand the kingdom, there's nothing that works against you. Praise God. Everything is working for you. Yeah. If I understand the kingdom. Uh -huh. Because I understand that in the kingdom, there's a king who rules over everything. Uh -huh. And he has promised me yeah. that whatever I'm dealing with, he said, my grace yes. is sufficient for you. Praise All right? So I'm not going to get all broke up and bent out of shape because of, of, of the obstacles that's placed in my way. Because if I receive the word of God from God's kingdom, then it's working for me. But our man said is that this is working against me. Yeah. And then the devil gets in there with both feet and both hands and starts stirring stuff up. Yeah. Amen. Until he get us frustrated. He get us, amen, suffering with anxieties and, and all of these different things because we have lost sight of what the principle of the kingdom really is. Yes. Yeah. Praise you, Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. Thank God. So, so now, amen, he says to them, you cannot enter unless you're born again. Let's read a little bit more. Go back to John chapter 3. I'm going to be finishing just a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, that which is born of the flesh. Now. He says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. Is flesh. You can't get anything out of flesh but flesh. Mm -hmm. And that which is born of the spirit. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Is spirit. Now, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. Uh -huh. You hear me say this all the time. Your flesh is not saved. Praise Jesus. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> Where do you think you get all them ideas from? <laughs> Amen. I know we all holler, holler the devil, but the devil don't give you every idea. No, sir. <laughs> you, you got some ideas that come in your mind. Amen. Thank God that you start thinking because of your flesh. Yes. Amen. 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 Yes. Thank God. And, and so, so now, but what he says to us is that if I'm filled with the Spirit, oh God, I thank you, yeah. that the Spirit, and I'm walking after the Spirit, I won't fulfill the lust of the flesh because I, the Spirit will have power over the flesh because I'm taking care of the Spirit man. Yes. Mm. Ah. Amen. God. Bless God. 
If I take care of the spirit man, uh -huh. the spirit man will take care of the flesh. Yeah, God. Yeah, God. That's it. Are you with me? Yes. yes. Amen. So that, uh, other words, what he said, Nicodemus, don't ever expect your flesh to change. Praise God. Your flesh is going to stay the same. Jesus. Paul said, in my flesh, there's, there's nothing good uh -huh. dwell in my flesh. All right? So he said, don't expect your flesh to change. But I'm going to give you something to keep your flesh under control. Praise you, Jesus. I'm going to give you the Holy Ghost. Yes. And the Holy Ghost will give you power yes. to demand and command yes, that your flesh lines up Woo. with the principles of the kingdom yes. so that you can live a holy and righteous Praise life. You, Jesus. All right? Hallelujah. Okay. Thank you, Father. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Now, watch this. Because your flesh and your spirit does not desire the same thing. They do not. Your flesh doesn't hunger for the things of God. Your spirit doesn't hunger for the things of the world. Praise God. Yeah. So there's always going to be a tugging, mm -hmm. a warfare yeah. going on in you because the flesh wants his way uh -huh. and the Holy Spirit wants his way. Yeah. So Paul said these two are contrary, yeah. one to the other. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Amen. But if I feed the spirit man, yes. if I nurture yes. the spirit man, if I labor in the works of God, yeah. the spirit man will win out every time. Praise God. Yeah. yeah. Thank God. He'll win out every time. They said if you put chain two dogs together mm -hmm. and they're in a struggle, they said, which one going to win? He said, the one you feed the most. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Amen. So if you feed your spirit man more than you feed in the natural man, the spirit man's going to win. Yeah. But if you're catering to the flesh more than you are to the spirit, the flesh going to win. Paul says it like this. He says to be carnally minded is death. Praise God. But to be spiritual minded is life. Not only life, but peace. Praise God. Oh God. Okay. All right. Understanding kingdom principles. Let's read. Marvel not that I say unto thee. Marvel not that I say unto thee. Ye must be born again. It's not an option. You must be born again. You can't get around. If you're going to get into the kingdom, uh -huh. it's an absolute necessary. All right? Yeah. Notice, he did not say you must get religion. Mm -hmm. Right? He said you must be born okay. again. All right? Christ, oh God, Christ in us is what makes the difference. Yes. Yeah. Church has never been uh, meant to be a social club, mm. but the church is supposed to be the body of Christ because he needs a body to operate in the earth legally. Yes. When he was here in the flesh, he had a body. Yes. When he went back to heaven and sent back the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost had to have a body. Yes. So he said that he became the head of the church, which is his body. body. So he can legally carry on kingdom building yes. in the earth. Yes, God. All right? Yes. Let's go. The wind bloweth. The wind bloweth. Where it listeth. Where it listeth. And thou hearest the sound thereof. And thou hearest the sound thereof. But canst not tell whence it cometh. But canst not tell whence it cometh. And whether it goeth. Or whether it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the so Spirit. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. <laughs> Nicodemus answered and said unto him. This, this baffled him. Nicodemus said unto him. How can these things be? Now listen. People 
who are unregenerated can un not understand people who are regenerated. Yes. <laughs> it, it can be your husband, it can be your wife, but whichever one is not saved, not born again, will never understand the movements and the activities of the one that is saved because they are motivated by two different spirits. Yes, yes. Amen. God. Thank God. The unsaved person says, why you think, why you always got to go to that meeting? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Why you always going to prayer? Mm -hmm. Why you always got to be at church? Yeah. Amen. Amen. He'll, he or she'll never understand it until they get in the kingdom. Yeah. <laughs> then it won't be why you always going to be, let's go. Oh. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank God. But they, 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 they reject it and rebel against it because they don't understand it. Yeah. So they cannot understand why you would go to the place of meeting and be in prayer. Amen. Crying out to God in, in fellowship. They don't understand that. Oh. So he said, wind bloweth where it listens, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but can't tell from where it cometh or whether it's going. They don't know where all you're getting all the praise ideas from. <laughs> yeah. Mm. There's a difference. All right? Jesus answered and said unto him. Jesus says unto him. Art thou a master of Israel? Art thou a teacher or a master of Israel? And knowest not these things? You mean you are teaching folk? <laughs> and you don't know these things? <laughs> How awful. He was teaching what he knew. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I respect him. Because he came to the one that had the answers to his problem. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't hang out there in the dark and pretend that he knew. Praise God. He came to the one that he had been watching uh -huh. and asked him the question so he could get the information that he needed. And this same Nicodemus in John chapter 7 in verse 50, when they was talking about judging Jesus, Nicodemus stood up for him. Praise God. Nicodemus said, do I law judge any man before it hear him? In John chapter 19, around verse 39, I believe, amen, again, when at the grave of Jesus, he took spices to put on the body. Here's a man that, that came to Jesus and got enlightenment. When he left Jesus, he was a changed individual. Now the scripture doesn't state that, but his actions says that that was a change because he's not talking like the rest of them talking. He's a member of the Sanhedrin court, but he's not talking like the Sanhedrin court people are talking. He's talking, actually he's defending Jesus. All right? Jesus says concerning the new birth, he says in John chapter 10, I'm the door. Amen. If any man enter in by me, wow, then he shall go in and out and find pastors. So what, what happens when you enter into the kingdom, you are exposed to all of heaven's best. <laughs> Bless you, God. When you enter into the kingdom, uh -huh. you're exposed to all of the benefits mm, God. of the kingdom. Yeah. You are exposed to the righteousness uh -huh. and the integrity of a holy God. Yeah. That's a scripture that, that Jesus used when he was talking to the disciples. He says to them, be ye perfect, even as your heavenly Father is perfect. Right? And of course, everybody said, you can't be that. 
You can't be that. Others says, well, it doesn't mean being faultless, but it means being mature. Right? Amen. So, amen. When he says, be perfect as your father is perfect. How is God perfect? How is God holy? God is perfect because he's always true to himself. Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah. Amen. I'm going to share this with you. Amen. He's perfect because he's always true to himself. He always do what he says he's going to do, right? Praise God. Amen. Thank God. He's a God of integrity. He's a God that's separated from all evil. All right? Amen. So, here's what the Bible says to us. The Bible says to us when it talks about being perfect, be true to yourself. Yeah. Keep your word. Mm. Have integrity. Yeah. Be somebody who folk can trust. Jesus. When I was growing up, they used to say your word is your bond. Yes, Lord. Amen. You didn't need to sign on the dotted line. You just shook hands and gave your word. Yeah. Because your word, amen, was good. Yeah. So he's saying to his people, the kingdom builders and kingdom workers, he says to us, keep your word. Yeah. Don't do anything that will bring shame or slander on your reputation. Praise God. If anything in this life we ought to do, and Paul says like this, Paul says it in Colossians, he said, don't lie to one another. <laughs> Amen? Don't lie to one another. If, Kingdom believing people are people who have, are operating in the principles of the kingdom. You should be able to trust. Praise are you listening to me? Amen. Your word, truthfulness. Amen. Always be true. Being truthful will build confidence. All right. Amen. This is part of my integrity. It is part of the inheritance of the kingdom. While I'm saying this, go to Exodus chapter 19, verse 5 and 6. Here is what, now this is when God was, was working in the Old Testament. And this is a reflection of the kingdom. When we talk about being, being righteous and holy. Holiness is not a man, a lot of rituals. It's not wearing a cross around your neck. Amen. It's not wearing a long robe. Amen. In fact, it doesn't have anything to do with what you got on. Mm -hmm. Holiness is when you are devoted, separated, committed, and loyal to God. Praise God. Now, if you're those things, it'll take care of all the others. All right? So we don't have to go around and, and, and holler about, hey, amen, you don't need to be wearing this and you don't need to be wearing that. If you're going to be holy, yeah. because I don't care what you wear, amen, if you're not holy, ah. it ain't going to make you holy. Praise God. It's not going to do that. Amen? Thank God. But I will tell you this, if you are holy... You will look right. Yes. You will speak right. Yes. You will walk right. Yes. Because of what's in you. Yes, God. You understand? Yes. Amen. So there's no use of trying to clean up the outside if the inside's messed up. Praise God. Get the inside straight. Uh -huh. And the outside will appear straight. Yes. Yes, God. Amen. Okay. Let's go, Sister Wendy. I'm going to close it out. Now, therefore... If you will obey my voice. Here's what the Lord said, talking to Israel. Now, Israel was supposed to be a prototype of God's kingdom, all right? They were supposed to be representatives of the kingdom of God. They failed, of course, but they were supposed to be. So here's what God says to Israel, all right? Now therefore, now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed, if you will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure. Then to me. you shall be a special, that word peculiar means special treasure unto me. Above all people. Notice what he said. 
a peculiar treasure unto me. How can I be something unto somebody else? First of all, I would need to be separated from something. Now, my wife, all right, amen, if I'm going to be something, I'm going to be true unto her, that means that I'm going to be loyal, I'm going to be committed, I'm going to be devoted to her. I'm separated until I'm set aside for her use. Okay? Yeah. So Israel was to be set aside for God's purpose mm -hmm. and for God's use. Yes. Yes. Amen. Anything can be declared sanctified. All you got to do is just set it aside for a special use. Amen. And you're not going to use it for anything else. Praise God. It's sanctified. Mm -hmm. It's set apart. You ladies with your china cabins and all of that. Amen. Fine china. You know how you look at it and how you appreciate it. You don't set it aside. You can eat out of any plate, drink out of any glass, use any cup. But don't go in the china cabin. <laughs> Yeah, because that's for special. <laughs> All right? Same way with sanctification. When God saved us and filled us with his spirit, we've been separated and set aside for special use. We are not to be partakers of ungodliness. We are not to be running hand in hand with the unrighteous. But we are a separate. Now that doesn't mean that we walk around with our nose turned up at everybody else. Doesn't mean that. Praise God. Amen. But we do not become partakers of another man or another woman's sin. Jesus. Amen. Thank God. You can be loving, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled. Amen. And still not involved in sinful things. Amen. All right. Okay. Amen. Let's go. For all the earth is mine. The Lord said, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me. And you shall be, oh, there's that word again, unto me. A kingdom of priests. Any woman or man that is concentrated or set, uh, uh, devoted unto their spouse, they can go from here to China. Hey God. Amen. And they're going to be just as faithful Amen. in China. Yes. Where they don't know anybody. Praise God. Is they would be standing or sitting in the living room. Yes. Where they're looking at each other. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Okay. Amen. I don't yeah. believe in all this. I can't help it. Ah. Yeah. I don't buy that. I don't buy it either. Amen. Thank God. If that's the case, you're not where you need to be. Praise God. Because the Lord didn't say, I'll keep you in certain places. Amen. He said, I'll keep you everywhere. Yes. Amen. Right? Yes. Amen. Thank God. He said, I, I, I'm your keeper. Mm -hmm. All right, let's read. Let me close this out. And a holy nation. And a what kind of nation? Holy. holy nation. A holy nation. These are the words. These are the words. Which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Yes. All right. Now, Peter picks that up in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. He says, we are a royal priesthood. Mm -hmm. We are a holy nation. nation. Kill you people. Right? Yes. What's our job? To show forth. Him the praises of him who, of him who call us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Into his marvelous light. Oh God, I thank you. So, kingdom citizens represent the kingdom yeah. in lifestyle. It is God's intent that every believer maximize his or her life yeah. with kingdom benefits. Uh -huh. All right? And when I say that, I'm not talking about all just material stuff. 
I'm talking about peace, ah, joy, righteousness yes. in the Holy Ghost. Yes. I tell people all the time that the saints of God are the people who are, are the most happy people on planet Earth. Yes. I know a lot of people don't agree with that, but nevertheless, if I believe the Bible, yes. amen, thank God, they are the happiest people on planet Earth yes. because the Lord said, my joy. Ah. Uh -huh. I'm going to give to you. My peace, I'm going to leave with you. Yes, God. The joy that I'm going to give you, the world can't take it away. Praise yes. God. I believe that. Amen. I believe that. Thank God. So whatever I'm facing, uh -huh. I believe that God will give me grace. Yes, Father. To maintain my joy. Yes, God. Right in the midst of sorrow. Praise Jesus. I would not be overwhelmed uh -huh. by stuff that come against me. Yes, God. So what I want to do, I want to rub elbows with the Savior. Hey, God. I want to stay in an environment of holiness. Yes. I want to be with people of like faith. Jesus. Amen. Thank God where we can share together. Yes. That when we go out there into the world with all of the ungodliness and unrighteousness, we have been built up in our most holy faith yes. so that we can stand and witness the goodness and the glory of God and not just talking with words but be an example of what the kingdom is really like. Yes, God. Yes. Praise you, Father. That's what I believe. Yes, God. Yeah. Amen. So Jesus said to Nicodemus, unless you're born again, you'll never see how the kingdom operates. 